Hey folks, welcome back. Today I've got an M1 MacBook Air versus the AMD Ryzen 7. This is a Lenovo ThinkBook 14 Generation 2. That's a mouthful. And I've been doing a few tests with this machine here against the M1 and against my Intel Mac. But today we are testing .NET version 6, preview 3 right now. And I wanted to test this because version 6 of .NET is ARM capable and I installed it natively on this machine. And stick around to the end of the video, I'm gonna be doing another giveaway. So if we take a look here, if I run .NET dash dash version, just so you know what version we're on, there it is. I'm gonna do the same thing over here on the Windows box, .NET version, there it is. We are running the exact same version of .NET on both of these machines now, and each one is running natively. So who's heard of Mandelbrot? You might've seen some of my tests here. Mandelbrot was a mathematician that created the fractals pattern, you might've seen that. And this is an algorithm that I found on Benchmark's game, which I've used before on this site to test other languages like Python, and Ruby, and JavaScript. Well, today we're doing the C-sharp test. If you are curious to check out some of the other languages and algorithms available, go to Benchmark's game, just Google Google for it and you'll find it. So here's Mandelbrot. I'm going to look for C sharp .NET number nine. That's the one I want to run. And this one has very high CPU utilization. That's why I want to use it. And there's a bunch of other languages here as well. Now, if you do come across this site, let me know in the comments below if you're curious to see any other language tests here on this channel. I'm going to click here, C sharp number nine. Let's copy this code and I'll explain to you how we're going to run it. So I'm going to make a copy of this code. So I'm going to create a new directory for my project. Let's call it net six prev test. And let's get into that directory. And now I'm going to create dot net new console application. Let's go. Same thing here. Make a directory called net six prev test, go in there and create a new project dot net new console. It's nice being able to work in a cross platform way like this. All right, I'm going to open this up in Visual Studio Code. Here we go. And we have this program.cs, the C sharp file that was generated for a console app. We don't need anything in here. I'm going to delete everything in here and replace it with what I copied from the page. That's the Mandelbrot algorithm. So there we go. I'm not going to bother reading it. I'm sure people much smarter than me have created it and it's going to run. <laughs> so let's save that file. Now, this is not going to run just out of the box because you need to allow unsafe blocks in your project. So I'm going to go to net six prev test dot CS proj file. This is just an XML file that describes the project and the targets. And I need to add something here inside here. I'm going to say allow unsafe blocks and set that to true. This will allow me to execute this code because it is accessing low level assemblies in an unsafe manner. So this should fix it. All right, back here on the M1, I'm going to do the exact same thing. So I need to copy that code. Got C sharp dot net number nine. Let's paste it in here. And I also need to do the same thing here in my CS proj file. Allow unsafe blocks. We are ready to run this. Let's just take a look at what we have and I'm going to clear everything so we have a nice clean slate to work with. Okay, I noticed something interesting here. On the Mac, there's a bin folder that's generated, but on the PC there isn't. So I'm not sure what accounts for that difference. If you know, let me know in the comments down below, please. The way we run this program is just simple .NET run, but we need to provide a parameter. So if we take a look at the Mandelbrot page for C Sharp, you'll see how to run this program. They have some other methods of building and running this, which you can do, but I'm interested in right here .NET and I'm not building a release mode. This is going to actually build and run together all at the same time. That's what I want to get right now, not the released build. Release build I'll do later. They recommend 16,000 as the parameter passed to the command. So let's do that. .NET run 16,000, but I also want to time this. So I'm going to go to control A to go to the beginning of the line and add the time command. Okay, we are ready here. Let's get ready over here on this machine. In order to time this command here, we need to use measure command because I'm in PowerShell, there is no time command there. So we're gonna use measure command and I need to open a squiggly paren and close one. And here I'm going to write .NET 
run 16,000. I got my fingers ready to press the enter key and the return key here at the same time. Let's go. Who's gonna finish first? Come on, come on, come on. They don't do much output here. Okay. All right, this one is output and it's done. The M1 still waiting for the Ryzen 7 and this one is done as well. So here's the first run. 12.8 seconds here on the M1 and 14 0.4 seconds on the Ryzen 7 box. Just gonna write it down so we can look at it later together. Let's do it again, shall we? I'm gonna run this one more time just to make sure and hit enter there. Okay, it's a little bit faster the second time around on both machines. So it's nice to get a little bit of an average there. 11.2 here on the M1 and 12.5, 12.5, 12.6 on the Ryzen 7. You know what? Since we did see a big difference, let's run one more time for the average and let's go. I also, after this is done, I want to build it and run the DLL directly and see how much faster that'll be. All right, now we got a little bit more of a consistent time on the M1 at 11.2. And this one is a little bit faster now at 11.9. I wonder if they'll converge eventually. But so far, pretty close. Truly cross platform, right? <laughs> All right, let's build this thing. So I'm gonna say .NET build. There we go. Same thing here. And in order to run a build assembly, I'm gonna need to go and execute a different file here. So let's go into that folder. I'm gonna go into bin debug net six. And here we have all these files that were built and net six prev test.dll is what we wanna run. So we do that using time .NET run and we specify the name of the dll file and pass in 16,000 in there all right let's go here cd bin debug net 6 this is getting a little messy of the command line sorry about that measure command dot net run and pass in 16,000 okay i haven't actually run this test before so this is going to be new to me as well ready let's do this okay did i misspell that couldn't find a project to run Oh, it's not .NET run. It's just .NET and then the DLL. I'm silly. Okay, let's back up here, take out the keyword run or the command run and try this again. Boom, let's go. Okay, it's a little bit faster, but not a huge amount faster. And still the M1 beats it by just a little bit. So we got nine seconds here and 10.3 over there. I'm rounding down just to the nearest 10th of a second. And let's try this one more time. Okay, again, we got nine seconds, a little bit longer on the Ryzen machine, 11.2 over there now. And finally, one more test, pretty consistent on the M1. And we've got 10.4 on the Ryzen machine. So there you go, folks. This is the .NET C Sharp number nine. Not sure what that number scheme really means at the end there. But this is running the Mandelbrot algorithm on the M1 versus the Ryzen 7. If you like this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. Smash that like button so other people can find it as well. And if you like this kind of content, consider subscribing to my channel. We'll do more things like this as well. And if you've stuck around this long, then you know we're doing a giveaway again. Today I'm giving away a license to Parallels. Parallels is a pretty cool piece of software that allows me to run Windows on a Mac as well as also Linux on a Mac. They're not sponsoring this video, but they gave away a bunch of licenses licenses for me to pass on to you. And if you want a chance to win, just make sure you leave a comment down below. An idea for that would be, uh, let me know what kind of test you want me to run. There's an idea. You also have to like this video and I'll check to make sure you're a subscriber before I announce the winner. That's it. Thank you so much. Have a good day and I'll see you next time.